Hi, and welcome to Tire Talk, hosted by Fleet Solutions, part of the Transport Investments family of companies. I'm Dave, and I'm joined by Brittany and Luke from Fleet Solutions. Today, we'll talk about everything you always wanted to know about truck tires, but were afraid to ask. Obviously, tires are one of the major cost components for an owner-operator. Let's face it, there are a lot of them. Brittany, On average, how many tires would you say are to be found on an 18-wheeler? 36. 36. That is a horrible answer. The actual (laughs) answer is just under 18 to allow for trucks with singles, super singles. So the average is probably about 17.7, but I don't know the exact answer. Let's talk about why it pays to plan ahead and not wait until your tires get down to legal minimums. Brittany, What can you tell us? So by planning ahead, uh, you will save a lot of time and money during your trips, and you can prevent yourself from being late on picking up or delivering a load. One of the easiest ways to plan ahead is by doing your pre-trip and post-trip inspections and just walking around your truck and trailer and making sure your tires and everything else is good to go. And if you do see any issues arise, give Fleet a call or call your team leader and arrange service that is easy and convenient for you. Thank you. Now, tell us a little bit more about how our listeners might save money by planning ahead. Uh, As you might have guessed, road service calls are very expensive, especially if it is not during business hours. You might have a lot of trouble finding a service that can come out to you if you're in the middle of nowhere, and it just takes a lot of time out of your day, and you might not get to your destination on time. Great points. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about the legal minimums on tires, truck tires specifically. Uh, As our callers and our listeners probably all know, legal minimums on steer tires are 430 seconds. On every other tire position, it's 230 seconds. Below that tread depth measurement, that tire is illegal and it could be out of service. Our company policy, though, is a little more stringent than that. So when our trucks receive a DOT or a commercial inspection, anything less than 630 seconds is considered up for replacement. So we don't want tires, and that's for a steer tire, excuse me. Uh, Anything, in other words, within 230 seconds of the legal minimum is going to trigger a review within the next 30 days. We need to see that those tires or that tire was replaced within 30 days. So we'll set a priority one expiration for 30 days out for a replacement. Why do we do that? Well, obviously tires continue to wear out as they operate and as the truck runs. Some of our trucks are on quarterly inspections. A few of them are on six month inspection cycles. And those tires that were barely legal by just one or two thirty seconds are likely to be illegal by the time the next periodic inspection rolls around. So by setting a priority one expiration, it's a great reminder for us and for our contractors. Brittany, what coin would you use to measure tread depth? Well, I would not use any coin because while a quarter and a penny are both very cheap for just two or three bucks, you can get yourself a tire tread depth gauge and carry it with you wherever you go. It's a very small device and it'll help keep you safe. And I assume it's a little more accurate than any coin. Yes, far more accurate than a coin. All right. Uh, Luke, tell us a little bit about when it's okay to single out tires if you've got a problem with just one tire. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I, I would I would not single out if you can avoid it. If you're unloaded, then it would probably be safe to single out and to get to a location that has your tire. If there's any load on that trailer, you're stay on the side of the road. I know it takes longer, but road service is your best bet. You're going to cause you could cause a lot of other issues. Uh, by singling out loaded, not only blowing the other tire, now you you need another one. But, I mean, there are suspension compensation issues that can happen without that tire there. So the best time to uh, single out, if you have to, is uh, unloaded. Or, or if, if not, then pull over. Have, have road service come. 
I mean, it's just as easy as that. Thanks, Luke. It's the safest way to. I appreciate that. I'm going to go on record as saying the most important consideration for long tire life and safe operation is maintaining proper tire inflation. Luke, Brittany, can one of you tell me and our listeners how often tire inflation should be checked? What's a good interval? My recommendation, and coming from a you know mechanic background and thinking through it that way, it takes time, but I would honestly do it, you know, on pre-trip and post-trip. And that would be walking around and actually sticking and, and measuring the tire tread, or the, not the tire tread, sorry, excuse me, the inflation. Reason being, and I'll give you some reasons, because I know it's a lot of work and I understand that, especially when you have how many tires? 17.7. There you go. <laughs> when you have that many tires to check and it's raining or it's snowing and it's or freezing rain, it's tough to you know, get out there and check that inflation. But if you're not doing that and you pick up a nail or you pick up a big piece of steel and you're not aware of it because you didn't check on your post trip, the next morning you wake up, that tire's flat. If you don't check it on your pre-trip, because maybe you're only checking it once or twice a week, you're riding down the road with a flat tire. That's going to blow apart and shred. Now you're on the side of the road sitting for three or four hours. So from a, a, a maintenance point of view, maintaining that tire tread depth or that tire pressure i would do it on your pre-trip and your post-trip luke um, i hear what you're saying but that sounds a little ambitious I in fact i would <laughs> venture to say that most female drivers are on an annual inflation check schedule <laughs> if that i didn't know women could drive cars now <laughs> <laughs> what about they, trucks? Can, they can vote also so fair enough, cool. right? So I get that. Maybe not in the morning and in the evening because say you park overnight, what's the chances of you losing air pressure overnight? Very slim to none. So I would at least check it when you're parking in the evening. Thump your tires in the morning even though we'll get there, but that will tell you if you have a flat that leaked out overnight, that noise. But I would check them when you park to make sure you're not leaking or to make sure there's nothing going on. So what's, at least one. what's the least amount of effort that you would suggest to our listeners <laughs> for inflation checks? Weekly, is that a semi-acceptable answer, Luke? Do you think that's, and I'm assuming that's better than what most of our contractors do. I don't know that they actually do a check versus just sure. a thump. Well, so on a weekly basis or more often. Right. I would, I mean, weekly, if you can get there and, and not do it as frequently as I'm, I'm recommending, which, you know, again, from a maintenance standpoint and a technician standpoint, that's where what I would recommend, if you can't get there, weekly is better than not at all. Uh, I can tell you that uh, they're about 28% of commercial vehicle tires operate at their target inflation pressure. Uh, statistic drops down to 17% in the winter time. So checking those tires, not everybody does it, right? So not everybody does it according to my recommendation. But if you're going to check them weekly would be great. Um, you made a great point when you said winter. Yeah. So let's ask uh, Brittany if she knows the effects of the ambient air temperature, uh, the outside temperature, on the tire pressure. So is there a relationship between outside air temp and tire pressure? There sure is, and it can affect um, your wear and tear on your tires, and it can affect um, the lifespan. So what's the actual effect, though? How many pounds of air pressure in a tire might you lose or gain as air temperatures go up or down? That's what our callers and listeners would like to hear. On average, you will lose or gain two pounds per 10 degrees Fahrenheit, of course. So if you go from Florida in the winter to Minnesota and temperatures drop from 80 to zero, which yeah. seems a little extreme, but it's probably not, yeah. you're saying those tires would lose 16 pounds of air pressure or would gain 16 pounds in the opposite direction. Is that what I'm hearing? That is correct. Well, that is the, the commonly accepted wisdom, so I think that's a good answer. Luke, there are some techniques, some tools sure. that 
our listeners can use to make this an easier, more manageable task? Can you name a couple or a few of those techniques, tips, and tools that our listeners can use? Sure. So, you know, there's a, your air pressure gauge. So there's longer air pressure gauges. They have ends on both sides. I'm sure most of our listeners are aware of these stick gauges, they call them, uh, to check your tire pressure. Uh, the one on the top of the pressure to check the inside, the one on the bottom to get to the valve stem for the outside. Uh, you need to be careful, though, with those as well. Uh, I, I, those are from, dropped from steering wheel height to the floor can be off as much as 5 PSI. So take care of your, your pressure gauge. Um, there's also the best way, auto inflation systems. You know, they're out on the market for a reason. They exist for a reason. Going back to that 28% of trailer tractor trailer tires, uh, that are proper inflation, auto inflation systems are, are great. Uh, they're not cheap, but auto inflation systems are definitely something to consider as an investment. It's more of an investment as an owner-operator uh, than it is just cost. Define not cheap, Luke. So, you know, you can expect probably, given the system that you're going to buy with installation, probably around $2,000 a unit. Parts are the most expensive piece here. Um, you're looking at anywhere from probably about twelve to upwards of sixteen hundred dollars for the parts, and then an additional maybe five hundred for the labor, depending on where you go. Um, there are other systems out there that are easier to install uh, that you can purchase. Um, uh, there are uh, the one that I was thinking of. I think it's a Peria makes a uh, a device that mounts, it's preset for inflation. It mounts on the hub or right over the hub cap. It uses hub cap bolts to mount. It connects to the inflation and it's preset. Each device is preset for 100 pounds or 110 pounds or 105 pounds, whatever your preferred uh, inflation is. It uses centrifugal force. So as you're driving down the road, it's pumping into that tire and it will shut off at that, at that given amount. So there are a few different systems out there, uh, as far as auto inflation systems go, that can help you maintain the proper air pressure and at different costs. Thank you. Any other words of wisdom regarding tips to make tire inflation an easier task? Really, you know, I, what comes to mind is, you know, there's a couple things uh, that, that you know, and as our contractors go through shops, they meet all kinds of characters. Uh, I know those characters fairly well. You are one of those characters. That's true. <laughs> Some probably, would say. Probably. Uh, make sure if you have any work done to your truck that the guy that puts your wheels back on, the valve stems are lined up. The holes in the hubs or on the wheels are lined up so that you can access those inflation, those your valve stems. It's the easiest thing to do. But you would be surprised at how many guys, technicians, when I say guys, don't care. And they're just going to throw the wheels on because they need to get get you out to get the next guy in. So, you know, double checking and making sure before you leave that those are lined up. Uh, also, something as simple as a pass-through cap so you're not spinning off valve, valve stem caps. Uh, it's a pain in the butt, especially when it gets cold. You know, in the freezing rain, if you're up north or you're out in the mountains out west, I mean... Trying to get those caps off, I've had to use, personally have had to use pliers sometimes to get a valve stem cap off. So pass through caps, cheap, uh, easy, quick solution to being able to check your tire pressure. Thanks, Luke. You know, being the sometimes lazy person that I am, I'll throw out another suggestion. If you want to spend just twenty dollars per month, you might consider Lane 18 at Loves. I'm not sure if other travel stops have that same tire pressure and tread depth measuring system, but it loves travel stops for $10 per month per tractor and $10 per month per trailer, you can pull into lane 18, mm -hmm. they'll come out, check your tread depth, and more importantly, inflate your tires properly. Yep. Whether you've got pass-through caps or not, obviously it'll take a little longer if you don't, but they strive to get out there quickly you can relax in the comfort of your truck without having to get out and get dirty, get sweaty, get wet. Yeah. 
It's, and I it's also, not a bad way to spend $20 a month, in my opinion. I agree entirely. And I found out recently that Love is going to be going to a, uh, a mobile uh, tire pass. So they're actually preparing trucks to, uh, to um, be able to come out and do that service for you. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. All right, so again, consider lane 18 at Love's as an easy way to maintain your tire pressure. Well, we've got a caller. Let's take a call. Go ahead, caller, what's on your mind? Hey, I was wondering if I should rotate my tires. No, there's no need. Those tires will rotate on their own as you drive. That's a terrible joke. Let's talk about recaps now. <laughs> Luke, as an old-timer in the industry, well, let's go back to Brittany's comment that that was a terrible joke. What kind of experience do you have with tires, let's say, over the last over the last many months, Brittany? Well, personally, on my car, <laughs> I did hit a coyote, and I had to uh, repair some tires, but... How about in the last 365 days, what has your experience been? Oh, I haven't had any issues in the last 365 days because it's a good year. That's a terrible joke. All right, back to serious talk. But before you get there, can I interrupt real quick? Sure. Talk about tire rotations? Yes. I have, an adver I have a suggestion for the guys out there. Again, stick in, when you're checking your tire pressure, check your tread depth. DOT will ding you if you have over 5.30 second difference next to when dual tires have the greater than 5.30 second difference. So pay attention to your tire tread depth when you're in the shop getting any other service done. If they measure them, hey, can you put the 9s together and the 12s together? Because you might have or, uh, the 5s with the 5s or the 6s, and just make sure you avoid that difference. It's a great, five great point. Seconds. And I assume that the taller tire with more tread depth is going to wear a lot faster if it's matched alongside a tire with shorter tread depth, Correct. generally speaking. Correct. Okay, Correct. great. So let's talk about recaps. Luke, I've been in the business a long time. Uh, recaps, in my mind, generally have a negative connotation. You know, the caps peel, especially when it's hot, especially on spread axle trailers, they are not worth the money you save. I think I'm still a believer in that philosophy. What do you say? I would disagree. Um, oh, would you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would. Um, so, you know, in particular, our retread program is uh, designed to avoid a lot of those issues that you talk about. To say that they don't happen would be ignorant. They do happen. Um, the frequency is uh, very low when you use when you walk by the, or you, you abide by the rules that we, we do here. So we use uh, a version casing, right? So, or one-time case. So there's, the, these uh, retread companies are required to stamp the date in the sidewall of the tire when they've been recapped. So we don't use anything that's been, been recapped more than once. We also don't use any casing that's not one of the top five uh, Biggest uh, tire producers, your Michelins, your Bridgestones, your Goodyears, uh, Continentals, your Hankooks. We don't use, we're not using a double coin retread. Uh, we just won't do that. Um, we limit, you know, one puncture per quadrant is the very most that we will allow a tire to be utilized in a retread capacity. But, you know, the adhesives and the technology in the retreads have come light years ahead of where they were, even as much as two decades ago. Um, these things, and Bridgestone, to their credit, has developed, you'll hear me say often, the BTLSA. That's a spread axle retreaded tire. That tread design is designed for a, for a spread axle trailer that will do a lot of scrubbing. So it's designed to absorb that scrubbing, the way they've designed the shoulder on the tread. So that they've developed that. The, the adhesives have come, like I said, you know, significantly further along. Um, and 90% of your blowouts, retreads included, are inflation issues. Uh, they're not going to be retread issues. You will have one-off retreaders. That's, you know, 
that's why when we buy our retreads, we buy them through Loves, which they're guaranteed. What, so, a, what about high heat areas, Arizona in the summer? Again, we talk about the it's it has to do with the adhesive, right? It's the compound that they're utilizing, and I should have probably prepared more on that, but. Uh, they are willing to, Loves is in Arizona is willing to stand behind their tire, their retread tire, if it is in fact a retread failure. I think that says a lot. If it's a retread failure and you take it to a Loves and you had it done at a Loves, they will replace that at no cost. How about the, how about the cost savings? What, what might be a typical percentage difference or dollar difference? So right now, I mean, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's very, it's significant. Um, I would say it's probably anywhere from, yeah, 30 to 50% cheaper to buy a retread than it is to buy a Virgin tire, um, which is a, a large savings. And if you're taking care of your tires, you know, they'll give you case and credits, you know, if you have Virgins and you want to switch to recaps. Even if you have recaps, if it's in a good condition cap and it can be retreaded again, they'll give you a case and credit. Won't give you as much as they would for Virgin tire, but you'll still get a credit for that case. I think you've made me a believer. So I guess at this point, I'd encourage everybody to at least keep an open mind. Yeah. And don't discount retreads because they have a bad reputation in the past. Sure. All right. So tire failures will happen. Uh, Luke, it looks like you might know a thing or two about spare tires. <laughs> what is it? Is it worthwhile to carry a spare? And if so, should it be mounted or loose? Um, I would recommend carrying a spare. Carrying a spare can save you hours uh, and dollars, depending on where you, lanes that you run. Most of our owner operators have, they don't run all over the map. They have agents that they work with and they know where they run and, and the weight that they can haul. I would recommend mounted, if they can, mounted Great, easy change. If you get road service or you show up somewhere, it takes no time to come out, unbolt a wheel, and put a new one on. Um, but if you're worried about saving that weight, which again is not much, uh, and you just carry a loose one, that can be changed right on the side of the road. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. Again, it goes back to planning, what we talked about, and preparedness. That's your best tool as an owner operator, as a contractor, is just to be prepared. Thanks, Luke. I will add that the tendency might be to throw a junk tire in the spare yeah. tire carrier. That is not the solution, yeah. especially if it's illegal. Right. You might be trading one problem for another. Agreed. Let's talk for just a minute about 17.5 rubber specifically and speed ratings. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of contractors with step decks, low pro step decks, Sure. or other specialty trailers with small rubber. And they might not be aware that these tires are not rated for the same speeds as a full-size mm -hmm. tire. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell me about speed ratings, Luke? So it's important to pay attention to that. And 17.5s in particular are very difficult to come by. Uh, not everybody carries a 17.5. Um, so when you are, again, tying back into being prepared and readiness, you know, having and knowing where your 17.5 uh, along the routes that you run as an owner-operator, places you've gotten them before is a good place to go back to. But speed ratings are important. Um, you so know, excuse me, that goes back to what Brittany said earlier then about planning ahead. Yeah, even absolutely. Sounds like that's even more important with this tire size. Absolutely. We've, you know, we, uh, we use those a lot on our blade trailers. And we've had guys stuck in the middle of nowhere, you know, North Dakota, or it, it just with no tires, three hours to find anybody with a tire uh, that's within 100 miles. So knowing those routes uh, and knowing those places that you've gone in the past is very helpful. But pay attention to the speed rating on the sidewall of the tire, or even ask the shop, because a lot of these aren't rated for as fast as a lot of our, as our contractors drive on regular rubber. So there's, a, you can find it, the speed chart, the speed rating, it gives, it associates a, a letter uh, with a, a max speed. And so running 
for example, I'll give you an example. A G-rated tire is good for about 55, 56 miles an hour. That's all? That's it. Uh, if you're running 75 on a G-rated tire loaded, you're playing with fire. You're asking for it to blow out. Uh, the the manufacturers test these uh, under these conditions, under loaded pressure conditions, to see when that tire is going to fail. And when you start exceeding that that speed rating, they're going to fail. Um, you're running that risk of failure. So paying close attention to the speed rating, especially on the 175, is, is pretty critical. Uh, which ties back to all back to what Brittany said about being prepared and ready to go. Thanks, Luke. Our last topic today is our national account pricing. How to use our national account through Fleet Solutions and some of the savings our contractors might typically enjoy using our national account. Brittany, how about taking this topic? Sure. So the savings are immaculate when you use our national accounts. You can save up to 50% off retail, which is a huge deal when you're getting steer tires especially. I know a lot of our owner operators will call in uh, looking to get steer tires on our Bridgestone or Yokohama account, and we're always happy to help them out. Um, the best thing to do is to start with your team leader. If you go through them first, talk, they can help you talk through um, how much maintenance escrow you have. They have an idea of the general cost of your, of your tires, um, and then they can send us a message letting us know you're stopping at a stop, tire stop, to, truck stop today, and um, that you're looking to get two steer tires, and all we have to do is call up the shop and get that approved and put on our account. Um, it's really easy, too, if you have a fleet rented or fleet lease purchased truck or trailer. All you have to do is call into fleet, and we can help you with all the different options for putting tires on our national account. Thanks, Brittany. Luke, any other words of wisdom regarding our national accounts? Uh, no, I would just, you know, again, reiterate what Brittany said. Reaching out to your team leader, they're smart people. They have an idea of what tire costs. Uh, you know, approvals for fleet is not going to, is up to, these guys are allowed to, you know, reach out and, and approve up to $1,500 before uh, they have to reach out to the team leader anyways. So, you know, going to your team leader first and having them push over to our team over in fleet that you're approved for them and this is where you're going you'll find a very seamless uh, seamless experience with getting this set up. So. Thanks, Luke. In conclusion, let's give our listeners the contact information for Fleet Solutions, please. What's the phone number that they can reach you at? Our office phone number is 412-490-6017. And we also... One more time. 412-490-6017. And if it's outside of normal business hours, which for us is typically 8 to 5 Eastern Standard Time, you are welcome to call into our after-hour service if you have a breakdown or emergency. Um, and Luke is happy to give you that number. So that after-hour service, David, is Fleet Rock. Um, they've been assisting us in the after-hours with handling any repairs uh, that are necessary for our owner operators and for our own company-owned equipment. Uh, the phone number for their call center is 1-800-685-6693. That's 1-800-685-6693. And it's important when you call into Fleet Rock in the after hours that you identify yourself as Fleet Solutions. Uh, regardless of your carrier, they, our account is under Fleet Solutions. So for them to help, you need to reference Fleet Solutions, even if it's your own equipment. That will just get them headed down the right path to get you taken care of. Thanks, Luke. Well, thank you for listening. We hope we've provided some newfound knowledge to you. Uh, we tried to have a little bit of fun. We will assure you that no Fleet Solutions personnel were hurt or killed during the recording of this call. <laughs> Thanks again. Be safe. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you.